around the world Seen a lot of things as the earth has twirled Been amazed and excited Collecting the clues when I was running Trying to fill my own shoes And now I'm right here And everything's good And all the little pieces fit just like they all should Yeah, life's been going fine I'd even say it was good Today it wouldn't change a thing if I could Hey, hey, hey I'm going up straight up to the top Walking out, pulling my head up high Hey, hey, hey Moving on to a brand new place And now it's here around the blink of an eye Hey, hey, hey You can't stop me now, I'm moving fast So today I'll be describing to you one of my favorite places, Alaska. It has a huge collection of wildlife, landscapes, and you name it, and it has it. My name is Professor Arif Raker. I'm very passionate about traveling and of course wildlife. So I landed on this trip on the 30th of August, to be precise, to 2014. Now a little about Anchorage. Anchorage is a starting point for many Alaskan vacations and tours. You know, they have a wide variety of day tours, some of which I took, easy to access tours, excursions and outdoor activities. And this is the perfect anchor for your day trip, of course. Now uh, Anchorage is located on Cook Inlet and surrounded by mountains and wilderness. The city of Anchorage is in Alaska, the unique combination of wilderness and modern city life. So before I landed in Anchorage, I could see the peak of one of the mountains of the Alaskan mountain range. So my uh, tour, day tour was arranged to the Brooks Camp, a Brooks Park, and the next morning, I got up early got to the Katmai Air Terminal, small terminal, where I was able to admire some of these float planes for a while before I finally flew out. And it was quite a sight. My first ever sight of float planes coming down, standing there and moving around. What a start to my Alaskan trip. So, uh, I came to know that Katmai Air Services provides air transportation to the Brooks Lodge and the Brooks Park and the Brooks Camp, including air service between Anchorage and King Salmon aboard the pressurized Pilatus PC-12 aircraft. It was noisy but very comfortable. And the float plane service was between King Salmon and Brooks. Now the first uh, thing took one hour and the one between King Solomon and Brooks took just 20 minutes to land near the Brooks camp. Of course I flew in by Katmai Air but came to know that Brooks Falls and Katmai National Park are now also accessible by Katmai Water Taxi Services from King, King Solomon uh, and the closest access point to Brooks Falls for those who would like to travel. So the uh, flight between uh, Anchorage and King Solomon was very scenic. Of course, you encounter, you can see volcanoes. You can sometimes see an eruption. I was able to see Mount Magik, if that's the pronunciation. Uh, this does not have a, a confirmed historical eruption, but it is a volcanic mountain. It was quite a sight while I was flying between Anchorage and King Salmon. Both flights were very scenic of course. We were flying over the Alaskan mountain ranges and we were seeing eruptions and I was also able 
to uh, see uh, the, the mountain range while flying and uh, one of the eruptions was also possibly seen and this is called Novarupta. Uh, it is a volcano that was formed in 1912 located on the Alaskan Peninsula in Katmai National Park and Preserve and it's about 290 miles southwest of Anchorage. Now this was formed during the largest volcanic eruption of the 20th century, Nor Novarupta released 30 times the volume of magma of 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. Amazing sight. So we finally landed in Naknek Lake. Now Naknek Lake is right next to the Brooks Camp for grizzly bears. And Naknek Lake is a lake in southern Alaska, Alaska near the base of the Alaskan Peninsula. Now this is located in the Katmai National Park and Preserve and the lake is 40 miles long and 3 to 8 miles wide. The flight, the landing was absolutely amazing. My first experience of the float plane ever. So we were in the camp. So uh, as soon as we entered the camp, the Brooks camp, we were uh, acclimatized for a while, some drinks and then we got into our briefing room where we were briefed for about a uh, half an hour regarding our contacts, our distance, our behavior in front of the grizzly bears. Now grizzly bears can be dangerous at times and this is what she told us. You are not supposed to run when you see a bear. You're not supposed to look eye into eye and uh, then you have to give him space if you see him walking past you. These are important points that she told us in this briefing in the morning after which we moved out to see the bears and the bears were absolutely absolutely exceptional now coming down to the uh, Katmai's uh, Brook Park now I must tell you that there are more sites to view brown bears but this is one of the best sites this river flows through the heart of Katmai National Park so after this school briefing, we were able to spend just uh, nearly four hours which to me seemed little because you could see them quite close. Of course you cannot get uh, more than 50 yards in but they were pretty close. So I was able to see different bears at different times. Some of them looked darkish but they were all brown bears actually in this uh, in the camp and uh, it was very well organized they take your name they advise you to go to the rifles platform until the falls platform has, been, has space there are rangers everywhere and there were many with tripods and huge lenses of course I had my lenses too but everybody had the opportunity to move around a small group were led in and out when their one hour time was up. I was able to see uh, many bears, sometimes three, four at one time in one go. And they moved pretty smoothly. Uh, most of them were pretty healthy and not all of them of course. But uh, uh, one was able to see them. You can't miss them. There are lots of them. I was able to see bears eating these uh, salmons. Now, of course, this was the spawning, uh, S-P-A-W-N-I-N-G, I'll tell you what it's all about, spawning period for the salmons, because normally the salmons are active in July, I was there end of August. They tend to die when they move from the oceans into the fresh water, and this is called spawning. And in spawning, before they die, they relieve their ovaries and the males relieve their sperm and the fertilization takes place. And these dead salmons are the ones that these um, bears were eating. I was unfortunate not to be there in July because my main mission was to see and land uh, on the base camp of Mount McKinley, of course. So, but I was able to see a lot of bears, of course. And uh, there were uh, times when I I was waiting to see the salmons jump and these salmons, I saw one of them was red, these salmons become red 
when uh, they start to spawn and uh, of course um, we i was able to see quite a few bears pretty close to i had to step back as well the rangers are always there to guide you as to when to go forward when to step back and what to do and what not to do it was an amazing place extremely well organized so while in the uh, brooks camp the bears uh, tend to ignore you most of the time of course one time a bear was only few yards away climbing onto the river bank underneath the bridge when i was going to open the gate to enter the bridge so things can get very close while i started walking backwards the bear calmly crossed the road in front of the gate within few yards of me and got back to the river of course the rangers recommend making noise when traveling on footpaths and brooks camp is one place where i did not feel too stupid actually taking to unseen bears while walking at one point i saw bears very close moving into the bushes and you can see them in the view video that they were very close to me two of them brown bears absolutely amazing on another occasion i saw a brown bear eating a salmon birds swimming past him and they did not move they were undisturbed even seagulls were undisturbed so this was a natural habitat and uh, every type of wildlife had its own security the bears were remain un uh, the birds remain undisturbed absolutely although you see bears uh, in the water enjoying the food, the here unfortunately the dead uh, salmons but you do see them moving around in the bush as well and uh, they're different colors of course they are dark brown light brown golden brown and uh, they're pretty healthy i mean they're pretty healthy they are out in the open this is not really captivity i might say so um, you were able to see uh, uh, quite a lot of healthy bears in the books camp so now a word about spawning which is very very important for youngsters and people i even i didn't know what spawning was actually uh, this happens when the salmon burst from the north pacific ocean into the park waters the soki salmon return from the ocean where they have spent 2 to 3 years navigating first across the open ocean and then up rivers lakes and streams and then they return to the headwater gravel beds of their birth to deposit their own young before dying their size averages from 5 to 7 pounds varies proportionally to how long they spent feeding at the area the the salmon run begins here in late june i was there in august by the end of july a million fish may have moved from bristol bay into nak next of lake river this is where i landed salmon stop feeding upon entering the fresh water and physiological changes lead to the distinctive red color which i saw hump back and elongated jaw they develop during spawning the salmon spawn during august september and october this is ex the exact time when i was there stream bottoms must have the correct texture of loose gravel for eggs to develop the stream must flow freely through the winter to aerate the eggs by spring the young fish that have just hatched call fly or juveniles emerge from the gravels and migrate into the larger lakes living there for 2 years the salmon then migrates to sea returning in 2 to 3 years to spawn and begin the cycle again this was absolutely amazing so after the 4 to 4 and a half hours of our wonderful trip to this brooks camp the biggest site for grizzly bear viewing I moved back to the Nanak Lake to fly back in my Katmai Air while standing next to the Nanak Lake I was able to admire the lake the Nanak system of lakes and rivers and uh, finally we took off in the plane the take off was smooth the sound of the engine of course it's a full plane it has to be noisy but the flight was easy 
the takeoff was smooth and of course the landing back in uh, Anchorage was also quite smooth. All in all, it was a great tour. I hope you have enjoyed my trip to the biggest grizzly bear viewing site, the Boots Park in Alaska. And if you do, please subscribe to the channel so that we can continue to update you on all the wonderful videos that will follow. Thank you.